and welcome back to Anime on Draft, episode 18. I am your host, Rolando, and as always, I am joined by the Drusif. I'm not as drunk this week, guys. <laughs> and Good. Alec. Yo, what's up, everybody? So, uh, what do we got here this week? What beer is this, Alec? You uh, picked it out. Um, you want to? This is tell us? the Frambois Lambic uh, Belgian Apple Beer. It is a Belgian style sour. Lambic is a type of sour. I picked the <clears throat> Belgian Apple Beer. It's a it's green apple. I picked this one because I've been drinking the raspberry one for years. And yes, when you pour it out, it pours out with the head that's just pink af so it looks super girly when you're drinking it but it's super good so don't judge until you've drunk it <laughs> but i've always wanted to try the green apple version and so finally i was at the store we were trying to figure out one that we could all get and uh we couldn't so i was like screw it everyone can get this one just get this one so that's kind of how i decided on this one plus it's hot and a fruity lambic sounded pretty good given the weather yeah, sours You've are You've never had the green summer. apple one? I've never had the green apple one, no. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm excited. Good for a, a, ta- a tasty treat. Yeah, when I bought it, the, uh, the lady at BevMo was like, oh, good job picking up the best one. I was like, oh, is this the best flavor? She's like, yeah, this is the best one. I was like, I'm all, I've only ever had the raspberry. And she like looked at me and she was like, you're going to like this. And I was like, all right. <laughs> if you're wrong, I, I want a refund. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, why don't we uh, go ahead and uh, take our first sips? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, it smells like... <laughs> smells like apple the, cider. The way I always... The way I always like to talk about the green apple lambic is it it tastes like a mix between a sour um and a like or a, sorry a cider and a green jolly rancher like green apple jolly i was rancher. actually thinking jolly and rancher. that's that's that is exactly like what it tastes like and, and everyone knows green jolly rancher delicious. is the best one everyone i like blue that. but but green <clears throat> is pretty good too and drew has been removed from the show now <laughs> it's blue it's blue raspberry you're just talking about how much you like raspberry bro like yeah I don't know of a blue raspberry, okay? I know of a red <laughs> raspberry. Don't make up your don't make up your science jolly ranchers, okay? <laughs> science ranchers. Well, uh I mean just throw it. <laughs> I mean just tasting it, it's it's got like, you know, like that cider like quality. Mhm. It's smooth like cider. Mhm. Super fizzy, super carbonated. Mhm. Smells like uh, you know, a typical lambic um like a typical uh, one that you could get here, not like super crazy. The color. The one thing uh, that I always, good. yeah. The one thing I always notice when I drink this though is that I get like I drink it, it's like delicious, and I swallow it, and then I get like that jaw lock sour kind of uh, like aftertaste sort of feeling. Um, just because it, it is kind of sour. I mean, it's it's not like unpleasant sour, but I notice that as I drink it more, <laughs> I get like this kind of like lock jaw sort of like back of your wisdom teeth like feeling like in your when jaw. You, yeah. And it's just like like re- when you eat a, a warhead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it's not like unpleasant. Like it goes away after a couple seconds, but it's it's there and it's a, it's a it, you know, it's a little unpleasant, but you just you're like, like well, wow, this tastes really good. I'm just going to drink more. <laughs> Right. It's like a stronger version of when you eat a green apple, because like when you mm-hmm. eat a green apple, you get that a little bit, too. It's kind of like around like like you said, like your wisdom teeth. I kind of feel it like around my tonsils, I guess, way back yeah. in the tongue. And it's like, eh, OK, I'm good. <laughs> but yeah, yeah you yeah. definitely do get it. Besides that, though, the drinkability is definitely there. I mean, you talked about it like being a good beer to drink, like when it's super hot out and different things mm-hmm. like that. It's just like. I can chug two or three bottles of this and be fine, oh, yeah. which is it's, also okay because it's low ABV. It's like 3.5%. So Yeah, it's not very high. And uh, you could put bring this outside on a hot day, have this giant bottle, and just sip it. This would be good with dessert, I bet, too. Some yeah, kind probably, of dessert. Yeah. It's, um, like fruit salad or some shit. Mm, that would be interesting with fruit salad. Um it's almost it's almost like kind of like a Moscato sort of like a chilled wine that's super mm-hmm. sweet and things like that. It's less know. alcohol, though. For sure. Um, no headache. Yeah. 
but what, what's nice about this is um if you're not into so like i guess if you're a female listener and you're not into you know like pretty bitter beers like we've been having recently um you might want to try this you don't have to stick to um you know blue moon or like any like wine shock stuff. top <laughs> yeah shock, shock top. top yeah um, i know a lot i know, of I know a lot just of don't like beer at all yeah, a lot of my Not female friends drink ciders. They they all really mm-hmm. enjoy ciders. So this is one of the things I tell. I suggest mm-hmm. this, and I suggest like any type of like mead, like a honey mead or something like that. That's always like mm-hmm. a good kind of segue something into to try. building into beer. Because yeah, my mom doesn't like beer either. She doesn't like IPA. She doesn't like stouts. She doesn't like. She doesn't even like beers like Blue Moon and stuff like that. But I gave her the raspberry one, and she's like, "I'm gonna buy this again." <laughs> yeah. So it's definitely. <laughs> Um, a really good beer to to try if the flavor palette of beer in general just isn't up your alley. So yeah, especially if you like wine too, like the sweeter mm-hmm. wines. It's if it's you're a white wine fan, yeah, you know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, um, I think that's good for our first impression. So why don't we go on and rate it? So uh, Alex, since you picked it, why don't you give us a start? Um. So I, I really like the, I really like sours in general. It probably would be one of my favorite types of beers <clears throat> in general, but in terms of the color and the drinkability and all that, like the presentation that you get, this one is top notch. Um, the flavor, like you guys said, you know, it's like a Jolly Rancher with like a cider Jolly Rancher. It goes down smooth. It kind of gives you a little bit of that like, you know, sour tinge in the back of your throat or whatever. But besides that, it's very pleasant to drink. It's super light for hot days. You could drink it on a cold day and it would still be, you know, pleasant. It just is amazing in summer. Um, So I think I'm going to give this. I'm going to have to do a side by side with this and a raspberry because I'm not sure which I like better. But I'm really liking this one a lot. But I think I'm going to have to give it a solid 3.75, maybe a 4. Let's go, you know, hmm, let's go 3.75. Let's do that. <laughs> I ain't doing that. I ain't doing none of that 3.8. <laughs> what, do I look, what do I look like? What, who do you think I am? I'm going to go 3.75. All right. Cool. Drew, what do you think? Um, I I mean, I like it. The, the issue I have with this, and I was talking about it before, is it's not worth the calories. <laughs> and that's why I'm going to rate it a little bit lower. It's like a super good beer, but you're not going to get drunk drinking this. You need to drink like two or three bottles in order to feel it. Um, I talk about the low ABV and things like that. Um, for that reason, I'm going to rate it lower. I'm going to rate it a 3.25. It's definitely delicious, um, but... The high calorie content plus the kind of lockjaw feeling you get um, and needing to drink a ton of it to get drunk. Um, that's kind of why I rate it a, a little bit lower than uh, than something else. So. Cool. cool. Well, um, I'm actually kind of in between the <clears throat> both of you. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and give this a 3.5. Um, For an overall rating of 3.5. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a good beer. Uh, I I do feel like it's not um, it's not like going to get you drunk, like you said, Drew. And it, uh, there's, you know, a lot of um, s- like sweetness to it that can, you know, kind of start to get um, old on your palate for a- after drinking it for a while, which is kind of why, like as much as I like drinking ciders, I can't drink more than like maybe two bottles of one because you know it's it, it's just like so sweet and like we'll mm-hmm. you know start to i don't know like y- you get like a shit ton of calories from it like you said and like you just don't feel as drunk i guess <laughs> this is like, like a, a different <laughs> the, f- the flavor the flavor kind of gets it gets old after a yeah. while but uh yeah i mean i think you know three and a half pretty solid it's it tastes great but i don't know how many of these i could drink without just feeling like i didn't drink any alcohol related beverage so <laughs> um cool well so, quick thing before i move on i was thinking just right now 
we this is kind of this is a stupid thought um and we can completely ignore it but uh you know how we it's abv for the alcohol content mm -hmm. so i was thinking we give them we give it a rating right and we give it like 3.75 3.25 we should call it 3.75 adp anime draft points and then boom we got our own rating system going on i know it's a dumb it's a dumb idea but it popped in my Bleh. head right now we should think of something <laughs> like that anyways we should think of something Bleh. like that i think it'd be cool I think it'd be cool. You know what? Screw you, Drew. I'll see you coming up with creative ideas, you boring motherfucker. I just gave you, I just gave you a Sigiri face. Bleh. Oh, gosh. Triggered. Bleh. That means nothing can't go to me because she's worthless. Can't Triggered. go downstairs. Triggered. Eh. Can't go downstairs. Well, eh. Triggered. Well, we just found out that uh, Drew can no longer go downstairs. Yeah. It's a, it's a, he's got PTSD and he's also from, an <laughs> from Aramanga Sensei. <laughs> he's also an 11-year-old girl. Yeah. Apparently. Plus the letter, dude. I couldn't oh, yeah. go downstairs in the letter. Yeah, dude. you just fall down the stairs. <laughs> um God. well moving on so uh this week in our happy hour we're kind of still you know experimenting with new things so um we're gonna mm. start off by talking about new like this last week in news for anime beer gaming you know all of the above so um why don't we start with um so did you guys hear about Sapporo acquiring a uh, anchor Brewing in San Francisco? No, I did not. No? I didn't. Did I don't really? even know what Anchor Anchor Brewing is. Explain it to me. Are, are you familiar with the beer Anchor Steam? Yes. No. Yes. No? I am. I'm you don't not. know anything. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> are you are Help. you are you trolling or like do you actually have you actually No, I, I've actually I've actually never heard of it. I've actually never heard of it. Wow. All right. Well, I'm surprised. I've never heard of that brewery. I've never heard of that beer. I'm surprised. I'm surprised as well. Um, I kind of want to. I'm gonna send you a picture I'm, after this, and you'll be like, "I'm, un, I'm uncultured, it. dude." Apparently, <laughs> I'm, I'm uncultured. <laughs> well, um, Anchor Anchor Steam is like a pretty staple, you know, craft beer, craft brew that, like, a lot of people. It's like one of their first, um. That they have, time. especially on the West Coast, because it's a, it's a brewery in San Francisco. Um, and uh, Anchor Brewing just got, uh, it was last week, they got um, bought out by Sapporo for mm. uh, $85 million. Oh, so, shit. So Sapporo's trying to yeah. break into the uh, American craft brewing market here. Yeah. Get a piece of that pie. Um, we see a lot of that with like the bigger companies, like Blast Point got bat, bought out. Um, try to or, think um, of Saint any Archer. of the other things that, yeah, Saint Archer. Um, Sam Adams just became big. Um, that's not really a buyout or anything like that, but they just um, got huge. You see, yeah, you see like different uh, companies kind of pull the trigger and buying some of these craft beers. They see the the movement and everybody's all about it. So that's that's kind of cool. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting seeing, you know, like since Sapporo is like a, it's a Japanese company, you know, they bought out a, a West Coast craft brew um, brewery, which is, you know, it, I guess it makes sense if they want to expand, um, you know, outside of Asia. So like they can kind yeah. of double dip their, their earnings, I guess you could say. I know, um... I know the like Asian beer scene. It's all the same shit. It's like you go to Japan, you have a uh, Kirin, you have Sapporo, you have Asahi. Uh, same thing with um, Cur uh, South Korea. You have like Height, and that's like it, and that's like all you ever see anywhere. It's like the equivalent of like drinking like Budweiser or Coors over there, and they don't have like much diversity um, with their beer. So it would be interesting to see if they then bring a craft beer movement over there i know they're like leaps and bounds almost ahead on like the whiskey uh industry and things like that um yeah. they've copied like the scottish ways of brewing and they basically perfected it if you've ever Similar had too. whiskey um mm -hmm. from japan like okay hand emoji like super <laughs> super good um they have the cold water they have the same climate and they don't have to make it with like peat <laughs> especially like the scotch whiskey yeah. um so su su super good um and so if they could bring like that japanese craftsmanship um and excellence to 
a craft beer um, sort of scene. That would be really cool. It would also take them less time. Um, whiskey needs to age and different things like that. So they can get like the craft beer scene going a lot quicker than they can um, a whiskey scene, a uh, scotch whiskey scene, things like that. So that would be really interesting to see, especially with the Olympics coming. Um, I think that would be really big for them. They yeah. can get feedback quicker too, because I'm sure it took a while to get the scotch correct. Just because you have to wait for it to age, then you're like, well, this was mm-hmm. bad. Okay, let's try again in 10 years. Like, not exactly right. like that, but as you know, they I'm sure they have a better way of testing. But like, I mean, I, I definitely agree that their their whiskey is very good. Um, I still think scotch whiskey has the edge on everybody just because it's that's they, the original they, their top scotch. whiskey is like, <laughs> oh, top scotch. Oh, you so you gotta but, you gotta like the PD flavor though. Like we always like troll about that, but you gotta like the PD flavor of like Scotch whiskey. Whereas um, a lot of flavor from the Japanese whiskey comes from their excuse me comes from their gross. wood uh, that they use in the barrels and that they yeah, age it in and things like that. Mm-hmm. Instead of and so it's know, a little bit different. And they're Scotch use sherry uh, casks a lot. Sherry, okay, then, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's definitely a different process. Um, and they definitely age it differently. Um, they use like different waters and like the Japanese use like the water runoff from like mountain glaciers and things like that. So it all influences the flavor a little bit differently. So they're different. Um, but I highly, highly recommend the Japanese scotch whiskey. It's just like dank. (laughs) And if you're interested in getting into scotch at the end of the show, I'll, um, find the name of that book. Um, it's a scotch whiskey book where you can scratch and sniff your way through the book. It tells you like you, you, I like the smell. I don't like this one. And at the end of the book, there's a chart and you can go through the chart, reading the the descriptions of different, uh, tastes and smells, you know, just tastes and smells. And you go, I like these. Okay. Go follow this, follow this. And then it tells you, you're most likely going to like this type of scotch or whiskey. And then these are some options within that type. Um, And and it's super helpful of like, you know, mix to sip. Yeah. From like, don't do Mm. anything other than just down this as quickly as possible to don't put anything in this, not even water and ice and sip it. Um, obviously you can do it however you want. This is just the scale that they use, but it's made by a master sommelier. So the guy is like, so he's got a good palate. Yeah. So uh, in for masters of sommelier, I, There's like one step down from that. But for the master, I think there's like 250 in the world or something like that. So he knows his shit. So, (laughs) yeah. So, you know, if that's if that's please, please don't please don't mix good scotch with Coke. Please don't. That just makes me so sad. Don't like if anyone ever if you're mixing scotch in general with Coke, then I just. Why are you it doesn't really scotch? mix well with Coke. Scotch if if you're general, gonna mix but. it with, if you're gonna mix with anything, mix it with a cigar and smoke a cigar while you. Uh, <laughs> if, while it, you drink if, it if it's that ice. not palatable, don't drink it for one. And then two, like yeah. you can just put some water in there and like you know, water it down a bit yeah. and just put, drink it. Put a splash and then give it, of water. Then give it to me if you don't. If you don't <laughs> put like a splash it. of water in a fat ice cube. Spin the ice cube around a little bit. Let it chill. And then when once the ice cubes shrunk a little bit, give it a little sip. It'll water it down. It'll make it less harsh to your palate so that you can drink it. It won't make you cringe as much. And then the same, like the water and the chilling will do that. And that's all you need. That's all you need. And then as you drink it more, you'll get used to it and, and you're good to go. Yeah. Easy piece. So I think uh, I, I, come up, I came up with another idea just now, like uh, what you had earlier, Alec. We need to have a uh-huh. segment that it's, uh, since we're talking about whiskey, we need to have like anime on cask or something. Oh, like, uh, you could do that. Drink, drink, drink some whiskey, some scotch, talk about that. You know, we'll have to, we'll have to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that would be cool. Um, we could do a second segment too, like a short one. Or something mm-hmm. in addition to this. We can figure that out, though. That would be cool. Because yeah. I know we all love our whiskey and our blended and single malt type yeah. whiskeys. Because yes. single malt scotch is a type of single malt whiskey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe we'll have to uh, compare a scotch to a uh, Japanese type and kind of go from there. But anyway. Comparable right. prices. <laughs> That's going to be an expensive trial. <laughs> well, um, now that we've uh, covered that whole Sapporo business. Um, why don't we move mm. on to anime news? So, um, on a side note, um, anime news networks website, you know, got hacked, uh, just, uh, 
like a few hours ago. Um, nice. And uh, it's a uh, nice. Uh, their site is now being uh, hosted on AnimeNewsNetwork.cc. If you uh, haven't, mm, sorry, uh, if you didn't see how they got hacked, I guess they were playing. Someone took over their domain and um, started uh, posting offensive music um, <laughs> on the site. So nice. I don't know if this is some like uh, Ram Ranch. Yeah, yeah I, have, I have no idea, but. Like there's a whole like Reddit post and like other other shit, but um, s- um, speaking of anime news, which I mean that, that site is known for its news, um, we do have um some something to talk about. And uh, Drew, I know you wanted to talk about the whole Netflix and um, Amazon Chill. strike kind of you like you know, have to subscribe to like another anime service a uh, viewing service yeah. to, to watch some shows now because of exclusivity um what did you, what did you want to say about that netflix and strike dude damn well anime strike is now a um anime service within amazon so not only do you need amazon prime which is i think it's like 99 dollars a year something along those lines uh, if you pay for it all at once or it's like ten dollars a month if you're paying for it that way Uh, on top of that in order to access their anime uh, that they have exclusive rights to um, and by exclusive rights i mean you can't stream it on funimation you can't stream it on a crunchy roll you can't stream it on netflix um, you have to pay an additional $5. So it's basically $15 ish a month in order to watch anime on an, uh, Amazon strike, which is kind of ridiculous when, uh, you see the different mm-hmm. subscription policies for, um, other, um, platforms. The other problem that, um, people are having with, uh, Amazon strike is that, uh, they are not simulcasting the anime, um, they're not even delaying it a week or delaying it a week to get it sub. They're releasing them all basically after the anime is aired. So one good example of that is the show uh, Kaki Guri, um, Compulsive Gambler, the one that we've been talking about a little bit this season. Um, they've said that, yes, we have the rights to this. Um, that's why you can't find it on Crunchy, even though it's such a popular show and things like that. And they're like, yeah, or er, er, middle 2018 is when we're going to be releasing, releasing the whole thing, even though we're simulcasting it on our Japanese um, Netflix account, or sorry, not Netflix, uh, Amazon account and things like that. So it's like really frustrating. Um, oh, no, sorry. That's I, I'm talking about Netflix. I got them confused. Um <laughs> Net, Net, Netflix is the one who is, is doing I thought that, this wasn't very he, strong. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but anyway, Net, Netflix are the one who are not simulcasting. Amazon is actually simulcasting. Um, but again, you do have to pay the extra. Um, but yeah, what Netflix is doing is that they are not simulcasting anime. They're kind of releasing them all in big chunks, kind of how they do their Netflix original series. Um, so you have like uh, Orange is the New Black and different things like that where they're releasing them all at the same time. And they're doing this. They think like by doing this with anime, it's going to be like help foster that. But when you have sites like Crunchyroll and Funimation, who are simulcasting it and things like that that's what we want and another big problem with that is you know anime is changing every season i mean you can see that through the show we're talking about different anime each uh each season um there's 40 to 50 different new shows that you're able to watch with maybe three or four and four is like generous uh anime continuing for two seasons um and it's really killing the pop or the popularity of certain shows because we can see that certain shows like uh, One Punch Man or um, Attack on Titan got so popular because we we're able to go and watch them each week and kind of talk about them, sort of similar to how Game of Thrones is released. Everybody's right. talking about Game of Thrones on Monday morning, um, and that was kind of the same thing that you know we were all looking forward to talking about you know Attack on Titan or One Punch Man or any other popular anime. We would see this week's episode, we would go mm-hmm. like, oh shit, did you see what? happen different things like that and you're totally totally killing the hype netflix when you release a show like kakiguri almost a year later when people have forgotten about it 
Um, there's no forum to talk about it. And at the same time, you're encouraging pirates or the seven seas to, um, you know, people who are diehard anime fans are going to go to there instead of maybe supporting thar. you go thar. Um, and watching that and <laughs> go there. Uh, they're, thar. they're supporting, they're not supporting and paying when, you know, a lot of, a lot of people who enjoy anime, are more willing to do like I know I enjoy paying for my Crunchyroll subscription, even though Crunchyroll also has some sketchy practices and things like that. Um, but I'm more willing to support the anime so that we get more quality anime. And so you've seen how Crunchyroll's grown over the years because of that. Yeah, um, that's the take on Amazon um, with Netflix <laughs> or, or sorry with Netflix. I keep fucking confusing them you uh, with Amazon. <laughs> No, I, well, I mean, I've been up since like three in the morning. So, um, <laughs> with Amazon, did you want to talk a, a little bit about the issues uh, with Amazon, Rolando? Or, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a subscriber to Crunchyroll, so mm-hmm. I usually like to, like, they have the biggest selection along with Funimation, but I don't have a Funimation mm-hmm. sub. But, like, I guess now, like, if you get a VRV sub, you can have access to both Crunchyroll and Funimation. Funimation usually right. has more dubs than they do subs. I don't really care mm. about a lot of dubs <laughs> anyway. Um, Those are usually bad. What? What? Well, uh, <laughs> um, I'm not... because they're not usually too, bad. I'm not too um, keen on, you know, the addition of the anime strike on Amazon because... It's another service, and it's like it would be it would be something completely different if it was part of um, Prime Video. But it's something mm-hmm. like you said; you have to add another five dollars a month. That's like, I'm sure they're not like you know charging you sixty dollars for the year. It's probably c- closer to like forty five or fifty. I don't know the exact numbers, but I don't want to pay that much to watch maybe one or two shows that aren't on on Crunchyroll. Mm-hmm. Um, but that does that's, push you towards yeah. like, you know, going to a, a, a fan sub or, you know, like, um, like a streaming site that you don't, you know, pay money to support the studios. And, um, like you said, it's not, I, like, I, I like, you know, doing what I can to support the people that make these anime. And I mean, I try to watch as much as I can on Crunchyroll just because, you know, I pay for it. Um, but mm-hmm. I could, I definitely get my money's worth on Crunchyroll. <laughs> yeah. Cause like the, like now they have a yeah. lot of shows. I remember when I first started subbing, um, to Crunchyroll, they maybe got like three or four shows a season and now they get like the, on the upwards yeah. of like what, 10, 12 shows mm-hmm. a season. Whether yeah, they're the, the, not, the vast but, majority of what they, what they think are going to be popular, yeah. which is nice. And so, I mean, it's another service I don't care to subscribe to. I know, I think it's like Princess Principles on there. And it's like mm-hmm. unfortunate that it's on there because, think- you know, if that was just on Crunchyroll, I feel like you would have a lot access to a lot more viewers um, mm-hmm. in, in general. And then there's a the whole Netflix thing. I guess they're going to stream Violet Evergarden, the new KyoAni um, mm-hmm. adaptation with, uh, you know, like obviously it's going to have the typical QNE like Moe look, but mm, I, I have a Netflix subscription and like, I won't be sad about it, but I prefer to, um, just, you know, watch it simulcast on Crunchyroll rather than like, you know, here's a bunch of episodes and like, yeah, it's nice to binge, but like, <clears throat> I feel like, like you said, part of the intrigue is having that cliffhanger and then talking about it with someone and, you know, like letting letting your mind go through all like the different permutations of what can happen next and and all that jazz. And then, you know, like the basis the next of episode. our show. Yeah. You mean? Ex- well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, and exactly. I and I, I think it works for more like American television and things like, you know, the the different shows that we've been seeing uh, as Netflix originals and things like that. Um, whereas, you know, we know Japan is getting these, they're getting these regardless, you know, Japan may or may not be getting these American shows. Um, and it's, it just, it's, you know, Japan has it. So, you know, that it's going to be somewhere else. So it's like, 
why would I wait, you know, two more months or a year, depending on what it is, to wait when I know I can access it somewhere else? Right. And why would I then pay for a subscription that I'm not going to use to watch it, you know, six months later? It's just it's not a good business practice. And, you know, I appreciate that that they want to get uh, they they think that the um, the anime niche is like big enough to support with a, a separate service and things like that. I mean, anime is getting more and more immensely popular as it becomes more accessible. You can see that at Anime Expo from going from, you know, a tiny convention to like thousands and thousands of people going to it and things like that. It definitely has money. Um, in some cases, they're overcharging for a lot of things, but we're not going to get into that. Um, but it's it's definitely a good market. And then the way that these people are treating it are is not the best because... Maybe they don't understand it. Um, it's new, different things like that. So we're hoping, you know, with uh, different um, content creators such as us, such as different YouTube uh, YouTube uh, personalities and things like that, promoting anime, um, that they'll maybe, hey, get the hint and change. But it's not something that's super feasible. I don't see it happening soon because change in big companies is hard. Um Especially companies as big as Amazon, um, as big as Netflix is, um, it's hard to change. So maybe they'll hear our Far Cry, um, but I'm not holding my breath. But we'll see. All right. Well, um, moving on. So other slight news: it, um, the voice actress Tani Risa is um, not reprising her role in the third season of Shokugeki Rip. no Soma, but she is reprising her Rip. role in a. Uh, OVA for uh, is a uh, is the order a rabbit, so yeah. Um, oh, she's gonna go back and play Rize or yeah. Lizzie or whatever the fuck you want to call her. I think it's That's just good. because you know or, it's just like an OVA versus a full season of anime since she's still recovering from. Well, and the I think issue. yeah, and I think they probably already went because they started producing or <clears throat> releasing the OVA for Shokugeki, so they probably have already like committed the other actress or have even started recording with the other actress for the third season um i think and i've watched the ova uh, the the sorry the new uh the new voice actress is pretty similar you still get the the sundere vibes um but i know in the next arc of shokugeki she becomes more da- uh dare uh or dare whatever you want to call it um more loving um so i know people are excited to see her doing that but uh we're gonna have to wait i guess um i think um it said in the announcement that um uh tani derisa's agency um we're already in talks with um the production the anime production team and um we're saying that she's since she's still recovering they would like her to <coughs> still rest i guess you would say like you know take on mm. not as like a big of a role as um, she would in third season of Shokugeki. So they're just like, here, just, you know, mm-hmm. keep using, um, who is it? It is. I don't remember uh, her looking name. through the article. Kanemoto Hisako. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. I sure, I'm sure she's got some roles in other stuff that, um, just looking through this list. Oh, she's, like she's I, Tendo like in, said- uh, in Gamers. Yeah. All right. Um, and like I said too, she she did a pretty decent job in the OVA. She didn't have a huge role in the OVA, um, but I mean it's not bad by any means. She she did did well. So it's not like a, unless you're like obviously looking for it, you're not going to notice too much of a difference. Right. All right. Well, um, moving on from uh, this week's news, um, there's kind of a test run. Kind of wanted to go through, and if uh, any of you viewers or listeners want to ever chime in and ask us any questions, this is what it could be like. So um, I created a test question. So I'm going to ask you guys, what is the best anime OP or ending on a bad show, like a show that you thought was bad? (laughs) I don't really watch OPs or endings on any shows. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't know if I'm the best person to answer this question. I could say the best OP <laughs> or ending on a show that I thought was good because I actually really liked the opening for Soccer Request last season. I thought that was a really good one. I really liked the song. I really liked the video. 
and it was just a cool hype for the episode. That would be one of my favorites. As for Bad Show, I probably didn't watch the opening. <laughs> All right. Drew, do you have any thoughts? For the meme, I'm going to say the opening for Glass Lip was actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the anime is awful. I mean, we say it every week, but the opening, not not bad and not great, but, uh, you know, not so you bad. you love Glass Lip. <laughs> cool. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, for me, I'm kind of uh, tied between two shows. So um, the opening and ending for Okami Shoujo, Tokuro Oji, some shoujo show that kind of sucks dick. Um, <laughs> it Like the opening song, Love Good Time, is pretty good. And then the ending theme, opening, uh, Okami Heart, is pretty good. Check those out if you haven't seen the show. If you do happen to like that anime, I'm sorry, but I just think it's trash. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, disseminating bullshit, as bullshit you could say. Bullshit fake news? <laughs> um, be, because <laughs> it's kind of uh, keeping, uh, keeping on the train of gender stereotypes and all that kind of crap. It's basically got like some abusive dude character um that is the main love interest which is kind of like all right you can fall in love with some shitty dude but that'll kind of be abusive to you like i'm sure he gets better but i dropped it like after the third episode um and then the other show is samurai flamenco which the ending themes on that show date time and flight um Niju Sanji, which is flight 23, um, a clock. <laughs> um, those were That's the name. What? That's the name. Yes. Those were the names of the, of the ending themes. Like those were oh, two pretty okay. good ending themes for a show uh-huh. that completely, um, destroyed all of my expectations for it halfway through. Um, <laughs> so I stopped watching it, but the oh. ending, the ending themes were pretty good. Um, that's pretty much it for that. So I got one to piss off Drew. I, uh, oh, you're gonna say I know what you're gonna say. Go ahead. Um, so I actually thought the opening for Bakemono Guitar was pretty good, but I can only get through the first 45 seconds of the show plus the opening. I'm not even but, gonna, you know, I mean, maybe a bad show, you. but I, the opening is good. I'll give you that, Drew. It's got a good opening. I do. You're gonna fucking. I'm sorry say you that. can't read. I mean, you're gonna say that to piss him off. <laughs> <laughs> you like to you like to staple staple people. Um, I thought of another one that was less meme. Um, Al Noah the Al Noah series has like fucking amazing music. Oh, yeah. But uh, the the second season the OP fantastic. The second season the show, however, was Complete one of the worst shows I've ever seen. Like how how do you how do you destroy a show that was season one was the, so fucking the season hype, one cliffhanger and then is so good. and then just. It's so good. And then you're like, just destroy the show. Like, I'm a cyborg robot now. And I'm a little bitch boy from Mars. That's trying to be like Lelouch. Just just an awful, an awful show in the second season. See, the way you do that is by setting up a cliffhanger. And then instead of pulling pulling the show back up off the cliff, you just kind of push it off. You're like, you know what? Fuck it. And you just kill it. That's what hey, they you did. step on the Schling, fingers that are Schling. holding for dear life. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like, uh, have, you seen, have you seen uh, the uh, Christmas story where he's got he's with Santa and Santa's like, ho, ho, ho. And he kicks him in the face and he goes down the slide. That's what they did to the show. <laughs> <laughs> God. All right. Well, uh, if you enjoyed um, listening to our opinions on a quote-unquote viewer question, please um, go ahead and go to animeondraft.wordpress.com and go to our contact page, and then feel free to drop us any sort of questions or comments, and we'll hopefully implement them into future episodes. Throw it on YouTube, too. Yeah, you can throw it on we'll YouTube as well. Anywhere. Um, mm-hmm. Or Twitter. Um, Twitter, we, yep. If you follow us on Twitter, go ahead and tweet at us, at MAondraft. So, um, moving on, um, there's the Twitch anime marathon that happened last week. Um, 
let's briefly mm-hmm. touch upon this. Uh, there are a lot of memes to be had. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, like, like as always with Twitch. Yeah, we were born to make this podcast, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Drew, do you want to talk a little bit about the anime marathon? I mean, it was. I've seen most of the shows that they were uh, showing um, here, but that didn't make it like any less great. Like, I think I watched the whole thing of uh, New Game. Um, which was awesome. I watched a couple, um, I watched uh, Dragon Maid and stuff. And just like the memes that chat was coming up with was just so good. I, um, if you've watched New Game Season 1, the opening, they say like one, two, three, four, say no. And it was just like every time it came up, chat was just like spamming it and going crazy. And then like the last, uh, the last time on episode 12, like, uh, when they were spamming it for the last time, people were doing like a salute emoji and they're like, uh, you know, it's been nice, one, two, three, four, say knowing with you guys and like just it just there was so many good memes um another one from new game that was the one i i watched like start to finish um was uh you know alba would get off the clock at like uh, 10 30 p.m and they would be like feels bad man uh, (laughs) japanese work ethic and stuff like that so it was just it was just like uh it was just like filled with memes it was it was awesome Um, i think one of the animes uh i forget i forget the name of it um it was like uh, I can't remember the name of it, um, but it was like this. Each person had like a symbol on their hand. They were like the chosen one. And they had like an extra person, so like oh, trying to figure uh, out who's the Rocka fake or whatever. The six, whatever, something like that. Yeah, yeah, Rock of the Six, whatever bullshit. Um, and uh, Chad just kept going back and forth like, "This guy's the traitor." No, this guy's the traitor. No, this guy's the traitor. <laughs> so they kept like saying like traitor and stuff like that. And then. Um, <laughs> it, it, it was just like a ridiculous experience that like the protagonist kept saying like i'm the strongest man in the world and chat kept just like spamming, i'm the strongest weeb in the world like just just good good times all around i i enjoyed myself i hope they do it again because it was really enjoyable to watch it was and really I think reminiscent the final one, of the bob ross Oh, the Bob Ross. Say, yeah, when Bob yeah. Ross, when everyone's going ruin, chat, ruin. Yeah, chat saved. kind of, uh, chat kind of united, and uh, it was just, it was just a good time. I think the last one was uh, they were watching Yuri on Ice and just the cap of prides <laughs> oh, the, yeah. the whole time. Just like, <laughs> was, it was a lot, but it was, it was awesome. The Yuri on Ice <laughs> meme favorite... just made into every show. We were born to <laughs> yeah, an insert yeah. meme from yeah. the current show that's airing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think my yeah, favorite meme exactly. from it was Dragon Maids, the last episode. I didn't actually watch the show, but I saw the last episode or like one of the last episodes. One of the characters was asking the other, oh, do you want to go back to our hometown or something like that? And the chat was just spamming. Twitch chat has never been happier. And it's just like over and over and over. They were just <laughs> Twitch chat has never, or this is the happiest Twitch chat ever. And then like the, uh, the fucking, um, I, the bit crying is it it's not baby rage is it the one where it's like the pink face with bible the tears? Thumb. Thumb. Yeah. bible thumb bible yeah thumb. this is the happiest chat ever bible thumb and they would just spam <laughs> it and it was just one after another after another <laughs> So but they're like, uh, don't don't loot the lowly dragon, and like people are like <laughs> spamming shit. It's like fucking hilarious. That was a funny one to watch. Yeah, that was an interesting. Uh, marathon stream provide um presented by Crunchyroll. you know we've been talking about them mm-hmm. a lot this episode but uh i did enjoy the memes and watching you know some shows that i'd already seen and uh basically just watch chat the whole, for <laughs> for for hours um it's like chat chat, chat with, was the best with your most craziest friends yeah. like people meme in like just it's just it was it was fun it, especially like like you said Rolando it's like all shows we've seen before I'm like I sat there for six hours <clears throat> and watched new game from start to finish just like reading the chat and laughing the whole time like it was fucking hilarious I remember the whole new game thing and then um there was the whole thing where like in the last episode Nene and um Hajime kind of spoil the ending uh, or like one of like the like the final <laughs> boss for the game they made and then like people are over yeah. it's like oh she said she was staff but like that's what happened at the end and then there's like the whole shit on Twitter going on and then people in chat were just going spoilers spoilers <laughs> 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 um, yeah. it was enjoyable um so it was a good idea yeah i I hope they have another one just like uh Mm -hmm. the bob ross channel oh yeah 
So yeah. uh, moving on, uh, let's talk about anime that aired this week. I kind of forgot to uh, add the anime to the pairing, but we can talk about it here. So why don't we start with uh, Soccer Request? I know we didn't talk about it much last week, if at all, but um, the current arc um, for these last two episodes kind mm. of ended with uh, this last episode. So, Alec, why don't you um, do you do you want to talk about the last couple of episodes? Kind of what happened? Sure. Yeah, I'll give a quick cine- synopsis. Synopsis. Um, Snope. Synop- synopsis. Mm. Um, so mm. it's like the, this town of Warabia, right, is like way out in the boonies, <clears throat> although technically still part of the kingdom of Chuka- Chupacabra and, uh, I forget the actual town, Manoyama. Yeah. Mm. They're actually part of that town. And so the bus company is cutting the funding of the bus to drive out to Manoyama. And so to where, where, like, where, oh, to, yeah, yeah. War, Warabia. And everyone who lives out there essentially is old. And so they have no other way, like, they can't drive. There's maybe like one dude who can drive, I think. And like, so they have really no way to get into town to go do things or go to other places. So they need the bus. And so they're up in a rage. And, and this professor of anthropology, a retired professor, he's like there. And he, he's setting up a way to try and convince them to, you know, stop the buses or whatever. So he, quote unquote, kidnaps the queen. And and then she is like, she basically drinks the Kool-Aid and she is all for the cause. And then so they're trying to send people to get her to come back. And what's the actress name? Maki. The one that we always forget. Maki. They send her and then it's like, all right, Maki, go bring her back. And then next thing you know, Maki is on the camera with her like drunk, drunk. going like, woo, <laughs> yeah, they're, like partying with the old people <laughs> and the queen. And they're like, I guess the uh, huntress has become the prey. And so, and then, so they're just, you know, having a good time and on, you know, they, they secede from the kingdom of Tupacabra and they're, they're making their own, you know, <clears throat> like kingdom or whatever. Eventually they, before all this happened, they were teaching all the old people to use iPads and like use the internet. And so now they, they can use the internet. So they set up a system for them to call basically like a, a carpool bus system, kind of like Uber, but like it's a, a Uber van essentially. Yeah. And it goes directly to their government door. Government funded. Yeah. Mm-hmm, government funded Uber van. And so they can call it. It'll go to their door, pick up a bunch of people, bring them where they need to go. And then they can go from there. And so because they can use the internet, they could like set up this program. So it started out with them going out there to find pieces to start the, you know, to get the, uh, the ceremony going again. They're trying to find the three pieces and the, yeah, the festival thing. And the professor's got one of them hidden in a storage room and he knows it. He puts them on his wild goose chase. They end up teaching the old people how to use iPads. The queen gets abducted. Maki, joins the cause by accident because she just wants to drink and have a merry old time. Uh, and then they get a bus. They are no longer seceded from the kingdom of Chupacabra and all the old people are happy. And then at the end, spoilers, old man, old man winters, the professor, he just, he kicks it like out of nowhere. He's just like, Hmm, I wonder if I had more ice. La la la. And he just keels over. And, uh, and that was pretty sad. No, Drew, I know we talked about uh, this, but, uh, um, the whole part where old, old professor guy, you know, kicks old man, when bites the dust, um, kicks the I know, um, I, when I saw the scene show up, I was just like, Hmm, I think he's going to die. And then you had similar sentiments. So you want to talk about that? <laughs> Yeah, it's just like I saw the scene happening and I'm just like, he's going to die. Like he has no further purpose. Like everything has been pretty much solved other than like the uh, the ornaments or whatever. Uh, but what really like he triggered a death flag was when they were talking about the lanterns outside the house. And, that, and that's like a thing that we do in America, too, like in old people homes and things like that. You're supposed to like turn on a light outside your house and then turn it off in the morning to know that like you got up and are alive. Um, so when I saw that, I'm just like somebody's gonna fucking die and they they were like (laughs) foreshadowing everything too they're like i can't get down to the hospital and i have high blood pressure it's like you know one of these old motherfuckers is gonna die Um, (laughs) one of them is gonna kick it it. 
<laughs> it, it it just so happened to be the professor. I mean, the professor was like he seemed like a really cool old dude, like kind of like uh, super smart. And be like, I have all these things that you want. I'm like having this manipulative plan in order to uh, you know kind of get what I want for my friends and things like that. And they're like throwing parties and drinking, and so like they're cool people. And it's just like this guy's cool peeps. this guy's cool probably peeps. gonna die. And I'm sad, but, um, you know, he lived a pretty awesome, cool life. So, I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So His light Kind of sad, but, but at the monkeys. same time. I like that you called them monkeys. In the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the lantern? Yeah. Sp- sp- spooky ghost. A spooky it's a ghost. ghost. Oh, it's a spooky ghost. <laughs> spooky ghost. Well, uh, mm-hmm. I just, I thought the way they did it was just so random, though. Like, he is like, I'm going to get more. Did I have more ice? And then he just falls over. I'm like, well, I mean, I, he's old I, as fuck. Old. I know it was sad, but I kind of laughed. I'm not going to lie. I just, the scene, <laughs> but anyways, anyways. It just shows like his feet. He's like lying on the floor. Yeah, like, it's well, just his feet. Right, and you're like, right. so he went to get ice. That was uh, getting ice, man. That's hard to do. And then it's just his feet. And then you're like, oh shit. Yeah. I should probably not laugh at this. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> old man, professor, his lantern faded. And then, uh. Now we we have the girls find one of those ceremonial pieces for the festival, so we have Stafu. to move on. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, moving on from soccer request, why don't we talk about this last episode of Gamers? So uh, this episode's all about Tendo, all about Karen, um, Tendo. and yeah. uh, she blonde ba- girl, bl- the blonde girl, yes, that keeps getting stepped on by Amano. So because she turned to dust. Yeah, she for, for me, I know in particular, I I was kind of meh with her character at the start. And then, you know, like the last couple episodes, I'm like, you know, I kind of feel bad for her because like she's this love struck girl that happens to like this, you know, dweeb um, <laughs> to, say, to say the least. But uh, she gets some huge character development in this episode because she's basically the only like one of the only characters that's in it other than Amano and um, we basically kind of find out how her daily life works and kind of after you know meeting Amano and trying to recruit him to the gamer club how she kind of is devolved into this character that sleeps in and doesn't have her shit together she's not running in the morning because she's like passed out on her bed because she's like dreaming about Amano and all that that kind of stuff. She but, couldn't fall asleep and then she hit the snooze button like yeah. ten times. And then she you know, normal people yeah. things. And so <laughs> she um obviously has this thing for Amano and they go on this kind of not date, quote unquote, where they go to the arcade. They went on a walk. Yeah, they went on a walk, yeah. And That's what she called all it. this stuff happens and then she kind of, you know, talks to him uh at the end and he's kind of like oh well like i like i i like the gaming club but it's just like i it's not that i don't like to be competitive and stuff it's just like i am competitive but i just don't have a backbone to you know like kind of just be be in that club to lose essentially Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and so like she kind of gets it and then um ends up i guess falling in love with him even more which is like all right i mean you, mm. you like what you like, but um, that ends up. You love who you love, making, John Mayer said. Ma- making a bigger uh, conundrum for her, I guess, because she's just super in love. So, uh, who, uh, which one of you wants to, you know, comment on this episode? Go ahead, Drew. I mean, you kind of covered. Uh, you kind of covered most of it. It was. It was mostly about the character development of Tendo, um, and like you said, I wasn't totally sold on the character, but now I'm like all in. I, I like my blonde characters to begin with. Um, yeah, but know. yeah, she's she's super cool. Um, <laughs> she's not. Uh, what is it? Um, imposing enough i guess would be a tame way to say it but anyway um she's uh she's a cool character um like but the it's just like i don't like the main character the main character yeah. is is such a buzzkill to me like he's he's so lame and like can't see all these signs and like the the cool i forget the cool kid uh, character's name the one he hangs out at the arcade with Uehara. um but like 
he like sees it and like he's like teasing him about it and he's like you still don't get it so what this anime is devolving into is like a series of like misunderstandings and like you have um you have him um hitting on seaweed chick and you know his girlfriend getting pissed about it and it's just like a, a ton of series of misunderstandings and different things like that um it's it's getting good um like i said i like i like all the characters except for the main character um so i i'm super curious to see um you know where they you take don't like this. seaweed it's, hair though anymore because she doesn't have seaweed hair. No, well, I I like I liked her longer <laughs> hair. Um, she, I think she's still a good character, Desu Desu. But uh, you know, she's she, she's cool. Um, just the main character is just he's a buzzkill and he's bad at everything and he like tries to do his best, but at the end of the day, he's just a boring protagonist. <laughs> Who I, um, somehow has girls like <coughs> flocking around him, like the hottest girl in school who has like a million love letters in her locker every day, and he just doesn't see it, and it's just like so frustrating. I have kind of a different opinion on uh, Blonde Tendo. That's her name, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't think yeah. she was by any means like uh, an amazing character or anything, but I thought she was kind of interesting purely because she was a funny character to have around, just because. She was always turning into dust and the way that her character was going with her being like supposed to be in this big character. And she's always like behind a wall hiding. It it was just a funny character development for her in that way where you could see her devolving. And they were always saying this is before she fell and stuff like that, you know. Um, And then I actually kind of like the main character, not because of the main character, but what he brings out of the other characters. He's Mm -hmm. always kind of the catalyst for the other characters development, even though he doesn't know it because he's kind of that crazy blah dude who is just like, I just want to play video games because it's fun. But because he has that opinion, Urahara is like, oh, yeah, holy shit, I haven't had this much fun playing games in a long time. And then because of that, she was kind of insecure about, like, the gamer club thing. Why did this dude who sucks, like, turn down the gamer club and me, like, all the time? And, like, it kind of brought up her own, you know, her back from her slump and all that sort of stuff. And like Rolando said, she's probably more in love with him than before. But, like, he kind of brings out the best in other characters. We haven't really seen it with Seaweed Head because right now the only change from Seaweed Head came because of Urahara, but who knows? Yeah. If something will come of that in the future. I'm sure we'll see it. Well, it's like now she's hot to all the guys because she cut her hair. It's like mm-hmm. she looks she looks exactly the same, if not worse. Like, well, she <laughs> she, she cut her hair and she wore a shorter skirt and probably her. If this were real life, she probably wore a shorter skirt. Her shirt probably actually fit like instead of being like, hey, this is my <laughs> she took a shower. Yeah, she took a shower. Yeah, she took a shower. Oh, she God. cut her hair like she actually looked presentable rather than having, hey, my brother's, you know, six feet tall. I'm five foot two. I wore his shirt. He's also 400 pounds. <laughs> um, I wasn't wearing pants because or a skirt because I was wearing my brother's pants. Once again, 400 pounds. I had them hemmed up like, you know, the, she <laughs> I didn't shower in three days <laughs> and then <laughs> I don't I don't comb my hair so and that's you know and now she put on a skirt showered cleaned her clothes cut her hair you know yeah, put now on that she doesn't have probably. all that hair weighing she her tried. down she's not 400 pounds um, <laughs> she tried <laughs> she's not 400 pounds her 6 foot brother is 400 pounds 6 foot 400 pound college student alright <laughs> well uh all right, moving on from uh, gamers, um, <laughs> the this recent episode of Classroom of the Elite, um, Elite. There, it's basically kind of introducing a new conflict into the whole plot. So, pseudo the basketball dude that just escaped expulsion is now <laughs> pseudo widow um, is so now bad. under another. Oh my God. He's under another. <laughs> complication. It's just you bad luck, it. dude. It's a bad month for him. Um, he <laughs> got into a fight with the dudes that were kind of uh, from Class C that were trying to pick a fight with him previously, and um, they're trying to kind of frame him to uh, for like beating up the dude. So I'm guessing what they're trying to do is like take all of Class D's points or like some shit like that and get pseudo kicked out because he's like. A regular now on the basketball team and all that crap. Um, Drew, do you kind of want to talk about this episode? Not a lot happened other than setting up like really for next episode. Um, 
like you said, uh, Sudo's an idiot um, and super frustrating character. He doesn't seem to learn. He doesn't listen to reason. All he knows is like basketball, basketball. and fighting, fighting Rev. Like it's just he's like I said, he's su- he's super frustrating. He and the the hardest part is though the um you know Amano Yoji Kun or whatever the fuck his name is. Um, he says it best. It's like. It would all be better if he wasn't in our class right now. But the unfortunate thing about it is we're all shooting for class A and we don't know that if we have an expulsion that the rules will state later that, hey, we cannot uh, we cannot um, get to class A without uh, with having an expulsion and things like that. He's so not it's super for frustrating. Class a, well, he's not, but yeah. he's trying to help his classmates and different things like that. Yeah, um, so, you know, <laughs> so they they don't know if they can afford to lose him and, you know, different things like that. And it's just like trying to make him try to understand that, hey, you know, we're trying to get better as humans and like get jobs after we leave the school and all this stuff. And he just like, I want to play basketball. I want to get in fights. I don't want to study like you had the fucking test answers to the test and you still failed like yeah. what what is wrong with you what like, is he I gonna do with it, it was a, it was a frustrating <laughs> he's playing the Asian right league. right and right i so i mean super frustrating but uh i'm curious to see what happens next episode if they can uh you know if they go to trial or whatever it is um the one ominous thing we saw was um the student council president, um, he like looks at like the notice that they filed, and he's like, "Oh, mm, interesting." So like, he'll probably try and uh, influence it in some way, whether that's good or bad. You know, we won't know. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Alec, what did you think? Um, <clears throat> you know, I agree with mostly everything you said. Um, I think, uh, well, everything you said actually. I shouldn't say mostly. <laughs> um, I I um I I think that like. Obviously, we're going to have the main character, Ayano Koji, whatever his Ayana name is. Koji. Um, yeah, Ayano Koji. He, he's going to come up with some solution again based off some minute thing that the teacher said and be like, well, you said we could you know, fix it in any way. And then they paid for it. There's going to be something that he comes up with is what I'm thinking. You know, and he's going to you know, use the skills of different students to come by the most optimal solution because apparently he's – a genius and apparent and like 50 years old and knows everything about the world. Right. <laughs> and so I just think his, his character is unrealistic, but you know, <laughs> whatever, that's the fun part about his character. Yeah. Um, I think, um, they kind of left hints in this episode. So there's definitely something to be said about Ichinose because, um, Ayana Koji does help her out and she is like, Oh, I'm going to help you guys out. Blah, blah, blah. Cause like you help me out. And he sees that she has like oh, two million I, points, like two point. And I thought she's points. a prostitute. That's yeah. what went through my head. And I was like, she has big boobs. Does she put them up against him? She she sucks dick for money. <laughs> <laughs> she like there's something that she understands about the system that you know not necessarily anybody else does because she by and far has the most points. Um, and you can even look at the ending sequence that she has like two point five million points. Like what? Like that's a lot of. All the points. And then you've got this whole situation between Class C and D. You know, the Class C dudes are trying to get Pseudo expelled or whatever. I'm guessing their whole plot is they want to, you know, like, make sure Class D doesn't get any points or whatever or take their points. I don't know how this would work out, like, any sort of um, payments, like reparations that kind of that kind of stuff would go to class c because class d couldn't like like lasso um the this crazy pseudo dude but i have a feeling what's gonna happen is there's yeah like you said some crazy scheme by ayana koji is gonna turn everything around and what's gonna happen is they're gonna find out from that camera girl in their class or whatever that's probably stalking pseudo or whatever like she's the witness that sees that it was self-defense and that they're purposely class C is purposely trying to, you know, fuck with them and that they're going to swap the classes are going to swap points or something. And they're going to like class C is going to be now class D, you know, that kind of, kind of, kind of shit. Yeah. <clears throat> I was also wondering if this is a scheme by the 
um, student council president making class C fuck with class D be like, we'll give you a bunch of money. If you guys, you know, if you guys fuck with this dude in class D cause well, the student council yeah. president's sister is in there and he's seems like he wants to fuck with him the whole time. Remember, um, it, he met the student council president met with class a and like the, the people that were talking about the, they were looking at the, in the previous episode, the list and like, Oh, class C, they got it like a decent amount of points because of that dude that is like picking a fight with pseudo. I think like they could also potentially be doing something behind the scenes to kind of influence this and kick class C down. Yeah. Cause they were worried about that one person in class C, the cane girl, the rich girl, 18 year old rich girl who has a cane and a top hat and a <laughs> monocle and a pipe and a smoking jacket. Yeah. So she, yeah. she may, she and that dude may have, you know, some sort of handling in this since they did meet with mm-hmm. the, um, with Susan A's brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. All right. <laughs> I think it's all like what you talked about, Alec, a little bit. It's all going to come down to Ayana Koji Kun and his plan. We've seen mm-hmm. that he's, very like he thinks outside the box like he goes to the teacher and says hey i'll pay for his test scores different things like that he's got some sort of plan uh we don't know what his motives are because he does have some sort of ulterior motives going back to like getting 50s on all his entrance exams and being like completely this average dude who's average at everything um so he's gonna have some sort of plan it's just you know what is it gonna actually be so right all right well um last on our slate um there was latte the last episode of New Game was pretty funny, entertaining. Um, Drew, why don't we start off with you? Uh, what did you think about the last episode of New Game? I mean, it, it, it's New Game. It is what it is. The big thing that we saw this episode was um, that uh, Alba's um, character design uh, collaboration with Ko gets accepted, and so they can move on to Alpha production, so that's pretty cool. Um, we also saw them, all the girls, basically hanging out uh, in pairs of two, uh, going to uh, the concert, um, and so we see like Nene, Alba, and um, Hifumi, um, and Hifumi's weaved out, and it's dope. Um, we also see um, the other two um, go with um, Yoon's younger um, younger siblings, um, and so it you know a cute episode. Not not a lot going on. Um, I'm curious to see you know what conflict starts springing up as they move into Alpha production. Uh, I think the game actually sounds pretty cool. Like I think I would play a game like that, like Reverse Kirby action that we kind of talked about. Um, <laughs> And it's like a cute design. I like, you know, scissoring. Whoa. Or scissoring. <laughs> <laughs> using using scissors to cut up uh, teddy bears and like hopping in their skins and stuff. It sounds it sounds like a cool game premise. So uh, <laughs> looking forward. Uh, you know, maybe we'll get an actual yeah. game of that in the future. Probably yeah, not. But, you know, scissoring. scissoring. Speaking of, speaking yeah, of scissoring. scissoring, Alec, what did you think about this episode? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought the episode was funny. Um, I didn't watch it all the way through. I actually started watching it and then I had to stop it and then I forgot to go back and watch it. But what I saw was, uh, you know, pretty funny. We're talking about the one. This is the one where Hifumi makes the potatoes and shit. And then. No. Uh, Ko, oh, is that the next episode? Uh, she she made it in the, the previous p- episode. The and previous. Then, oh, then I didn't watch yeah. the most recent one. Episode five. <laughs> uh, episode five. Do you know the episode number? We, we're on episode four. Episode well, four. because we're on episode. Yeah, that's four. what I'm talking about. Where she, where she, oh, so she made him in the. Pre- I mean, they anyways, talk they about. They're about talking the about her. That one, right? Yeah. yeah. So that was where I left off. Anyways, I remember because yeah. I saw her get her her shit accepted. Yeah, you know, scissoring um, <laughs> teddy bears sounds like an interesting game. I would be really interested to see what <laughs> turns up from a game where you scissor teddy bears, but. Um, no, I, I actually like the designs. <laughs> I like the designs that they came up with. Uh, I thought they were pretty cool. And how instead of, you know, like y- you become you, the the bear essentially eats the character and you've got the face or whatever. But um, I, 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 you know, it, it is what it is for the show. It's 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 funny and it's cute. Um, mm-hmm. And I didn't finish it. So that's all I can really talk about. Well, I have to finish it today um, and the next one. I, I enjoyed this last episode so they've been kind of jumping around um in terms of like uh the actual manga 
they've just been jumping around, like kind of, you know, placing different bits here and there. And um, this episode, they kind of skipped one part that I thought was funny with the uh, the pretty Moon Ranger or whatever concert that involves Yoon and Hajime. Mm -hmm. I hope they do integrate it in a later episode because it's a pretty funny, like, you know, thing that happens. But I guess it's not as important. It's not like plot important. But I mean... It's not exactly a game that's about, I mean, not a game. it's not exactly a show that's like about the plot, but speaking of plot, apparently the game's not about the plot. Yeah, the game's either. not about the plot. Speaking of plot, <laughs> um, the, there is a plot point that is going to come, which is going to be the next conflict that you're wondering about, Drew. And I think it's going to happen mm -hmm. in this next episode. If not, this next episode will be the one after it. And it's, it's not like a big, you know, conflict but like you know it's enough to um be like uh, it's like a conflict so um look forward yeah. to that um not much to say about that other than it was really funny in the scene where it's a uh, ko and hifumi are kind of you know like talking about like oh like why are you staring at me it's like oh because you become more expressive and then rin shows up and she's like <laughs> what's going on over here like why 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 don't it's I know like anything? Like Ko is like so fucking oblivious. Yeah. Like and she, <laughs> Jesus. And then like talking about like Hifubi's like meat and potatoes and like it like triggers Rin and then like Hifubi's like why can't you fucking read the atmosphere? Like I'm so scared of Rin right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then like after all said and done, she like pulls out her pillow and is like I've had too much human interaction. I'm just gonna go to but sleep. But she can't even <laughs> sleep because Umiko shows up and starts talking yeah. to her. She's like ah. Um, it's like Umiko, get the fuck out of here! Like you're the worst character. Like, please. <laughs> well, uh, I think that's pretty much all we've got this week. It's been kind of that's uh, all she wrote. We've been jumping around all over the place, but kind of trying out new stuff. Hopefully, some stuff sticks. Who knows? Well, um, I do know that Alec mentioned that we should talk about logo design. Right now, our current logo has been uh, very crappily designed by myself, um, and we've been using that this whole time. So if <clears throat> anybody of any of you <clears throat> listeners or viewers are interested in designing a logo or know um, anyone affordable that can design a logo for us, please um, go ahead and contact us at animeondraft.wordpress.com or, you know, drop a comment, tweet whatever and as i said anime on draft at wordpress.com we're on twitter at anime on draft as well as youtube anime on draft so that's it for us this week any last words gentlemen have a wonderful weekend yeah enjoy it catch you guys next time all right bye later on